Phil Sitsedi, uh, Joe, Mr. Jones. So what they did, they had to split the fares for them to come over. <laughs> so we took a flight to all these places until we get to Leeds so that we everybody can travel play, yeah. to play against Liverpool, you know what yeah. I mean? And, and the worst thing is that uh, he, will, he will never play me, Phil, uh, most of the black players are the same, more, more than three black players in the team. In the team. One or, there would be only just two to adapt. Because the training was hard, man. It was very, it was hard. You know, because I remember, I mean, we were at Kaiser Cheese, we were training from four till six, three times a week. There it's every day in the morning, at least 100%, you know, uh, mm. the discipline aspect of the game. Because nobody's looking up to you, to, uh, looking after you to say you're doing this wrong, you're doing that. You yourself have to be, you have to discipline yourself. You have, you have to take it, it has to start with you, not anybody else. Because there were players who were better than me. They could have got that opportunity. They could have made great. I mean, look at the, the, the great Dr. Kumar, the oh. Skaratin Do you know? Yeah. You know? That week in, week out. You do what you do in the field. You do it in training. And in order to do it properly, you have to even even get even harder. I don't say I don't I've never heard anybody talk about going to church. Yeah, it leads. It leads was always the... going to football. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what I mean? We come from and, and me and she was, come from the same area in Deep Proof. So we so when he dribbles someone, he just laughs and says, Kimbi, I keep party. <laughs> <laughs> so we laugh yeah. while we play, you know? No, I play my game in the dressing room. I play my game in the mind, you know, and I play the perfect game. Tackles, headers, and then once I go into the, into the field, I'm prepared. Ballers, welcome to probably the biggest interview we'll ever do here. Um, I'm sitting down with a Bafana Bafana legend, a Kaiser Chiefs legend, and a legend of the game in England as well, which isn't something that we say often for South African players in particular. It's rare enough for African players, but South African players, it's particularly rare. Uh, so welcome, Ballers, introduce him, welcome him. It's Lucas Redebe. Ah, thanks, Baku. No, thanks to get the same name right as well. You know? Hey, I, or Ruddy B. Ruddy B, yeah. <laughs> Look, I'm not from yeah, Leeds, I'm no. from South Africa. So. <laughs> Absolutely. It makes me feel at home. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I remember growing up as a kid teasing that, right? right so, like, right. me and my family, we used to be like, Ruddy B, Ruddy B, like as if it was a joke because the commentators got it long, wrong for such a long period of time. You know, you know, I always tell Martin Tyler, he says, No, the game is life and they know it's going to be life in South Africa. But how do you pronounce the name? And I'm like, it's Khadebe. Yeah. Is it, it Clark? <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> just say Redebe. Just say whatever, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I was happy because it's, it was now like the uh, own way of saying, saying it, which is, yeah. which is brilliant for me, you know? So, so which is great. Uh, I, was, I, was, I was happy for them to, to pronounce it as they, as they want. Yeah, I mean, yeah. of course. I Not think... the re, with ra, it's even better because the first time they even spelled my surname wrong. On, on, on my jersey. On your jersey? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I think that the, uh, the a lot has changed in the game from that. Yeah. It's something that we used to see fairly regularly then. But it's not something that doesn't happen anymore at, well, at all. We know Liverpool's new midfielder, Zabuzlai. Yeah. They really struggled with that one. <laughs> but uh, I, I give them a pass on that one. It's far more complicated than <laughs> hey, yours. Hey, <laughs> <'Cause> hey, <laughs> it's it is, a it tough one. No, it is. It is as long as well. So. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, great player. As well, he's really fantastic. tearing up the league. Fantastic oh, yeah. signing for Liverpool. Yeah. And um, Lucas, let's let's get into your time at Leeds. Of course, uh, let's start there in terms of the love that you felt. I mean, it's one thing for commentators to get your surname ever so slightly wrong and to print it wrong on the back of a jersey a few times. But you went over with Phil Masinga mm. uh, back in the early in the nineties, um, and the journey can't have gone any better for you, surely. I mean away from the injuries, yeah. which which obviously put a damper on your time mm -hmm. there. But the love that you still receive to this day in the city of Leeds oh. is is incredible. Amazing. Amazing, Marco. I, I think 
you know, with, with everything that had happened, was I always take time to reflect, you know, and, and look back and I'm thinking, you know, I was meant, you know, uh, to, to play football and I was meant to, did, to do what I, I did all along. Because everybody's saying, but you had a chance, you know, of, of moving or something. I'm like, no, um, yes, I had a chance. But for me, the important thing is uh, the opportunity that came at a time when I wasn't really expecting it. You know, uh, I mean, it was the time when the country is in reconstruction. Yes. We only started international football not long ago, 1992. Uh, yes. And, and, and obviously, you know, it was um, a fruit basket for European teams to come yeah. and pick their nicest fruits. Obviously, Phil was a target yes. uh, for Leeds United. And um, I remember, uh, actually, I spoke to, to the chief scout of Leeds, still alive. Yeah. Um, and the coach then was uh, Howard Wilkinson. So I think they had a clue about South Africa. Yeah. But they've heard about this tall striker, you know, who's yeah. banging in goals, you know, which was Phil. And uh, they sent the, the, the chief scout uh, to, to South Africa to watch Phil. Uh, they saw Phil, but the master, somebody has told them about me when, right. I were, when, I, when I were there. But every time they, the chief scout came to watch me play, I was injured. Ah. <laughs> so, so they couldn't see me. Play. In person. In, in person. So what they did, they said, you know, we might as well take him with Phil, so to keep Phil company, so, <laughs> so that Phil can at least adapt better. Because it's of course. Yeah. very difficult, uh, you know, uh, especially as an individual, a youngster, you know, in a foreign country where they know nothing. I mean, the, 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 it's not, and it's, the challenge is not, it wasn't about football, but it's the environment. I think a lot of people also don't understand that Leeds is not London. Oh, no. You know, it's like it's a very tough move for an international foreigner to come from South Africa, especially the complicated history of South Africa at that time. It's not like you were integrated into international society yeah. in that time. So the yeah. move was a huge thing for both you and Phil. So it was a smart move on their side to like, okay, let's bring someone to keep full company and allow him to adapt to English football. We see yeah. it all the time, even to this day of international players struggling to struggling adapt to, to the adapt. league, Indeed. to the lifestyle, to the weather. Um, so it was a masterstroke from them, but in more ways than they expected, right? Is that they thought, okay, let's help Phil adapt to English football, but they got a lot more from you than that. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, at that time, you can imagine... English football was about physique, pace, you know, uh, and uh, obviously the, the weather conditions brings another uh, um, uh, difficult or challenges that we, we faced. But it, it was predominantly white. Yeah. You know, and, and it's a very, it, it was a small city. Yeah. I, th I think for us, it was great that we didn't, really knew more about the English football, not actually in, 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 in the places where we, or the, the cities. Otherwise, if I knew, if I'd been to London before, you know, it would have been different. But, but I've never been anywhere in Europe. That was my first time flying away from family and friends mm. and such a long flight. Uh, you know, I'll tell you a little story, actually. I'd love to hear it. Because I've never... We've never, we've never traveled so far. So, you know, for us, when we grow up, we only talk about England. You, you imagine somewhere far. Yeah. You know, somewhere where everything is just like glass and, you know. And, and it was a dream. But when we, when we left, I was okay. I was happy to go. Phil went first. And then... Uh, I came a little bit late after my injury, after yeah. recovering. And uh, what had happened, we took two days to get to London. For me, I, I didn't care as long as I were there. Yeah. But at the later stage, I understood uh, and I look at it, but you know, it's just an overnight flight to London. So how come we took two days? Two days. And, uh, and it, 
and it came about that the guys that took me over, it was one, uh, I think both of them, they passed on actually. Uh, uh, Cliff Durant. Uh, yeah. And the the late Cliff and the late Phil Sitsedi, uh, Joe, Mr. Jones. So what they did, they had to split the affairs for them to come over. <laughs> so we took a flight to all these places until we get to Leeds so that we everybody can travel. And 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 I, I didn't have a chance, you know, uh, to ask them and, and talk to them and say, but you guys, why did you have to take the cheaper flights? Right. <laughs> you yeah, know what I mean? We could have been we overnight. We could have been overnight. We could have yeah, been there. Direct. But... But but that was that was a that's a, a quick story. But but it was challenging when we got there. It was freezing cold. The same night we got the at the hotel, there was a fire alarm. Cliff was big, was massive like that. Yeah. <laughs> he came in down the stairs with the <laughs> with the underwear. You know, it no. was it was funny, <laughs> and it was very cold. It was freezing cold. It was dark. And to be honest, it took a while for me to to adapt. You know, uh, not to 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 the to the style of play, but to the conditions around. Mm. You know, okay, it's a small city, as I understand, but it's freezing, it's cold. I'm away from friends and family. So so for me, that was a big challenge. And then the injuries came, yeah. you know, during my first season, which was, it made things even harder. But I think at that time, my focus was like, you know, this is once in a lifetime opportunity. Yes. You know, I take this opportunity, you know, I will try and make it work. You know, I'd rather try uh, uh, and, 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 and not, uh, I'd rather try to make it than never try or, or, or maybe fail not trying. Yeah, and live with regret, right? So that even if you failed, uh, in your attempts there, if you tried, you come back with no regret. I come back because, with no regret. Because you know you tried. Yeah. But, geez, definitely no regret. Even in those difficult early years for you in Leeds, like you said, you suffered injuries and then a little bit of headbutting with the then manager, <laughs> Howard Wilkinson. <laughs> right? was, uh, yeah, 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 you guys yeah. weren't each other's favorite people at the time. No, necessarily. no. No, no it, was, uh, it was tough because... I think at the time there was a few black players at the club, and I think one of them was uh, Chris Fairclough. To be honest, he made me uh, um, welcome at that place because he's the first uh, player that I met uh, at the club because everybody had gone to uh, to preseason and um, showed me around the club. And what a gentleman, you know, what a gentleman because I know there's that perception about footballers, you know, and mm. a lot of money, there, but these are good people, very, very nice, nice people and, and, and the gentlemen of the game. And I think he, and then my first impression was absolutely impressive. And I think that helped me settle a little bit. How much do you attribute that to Leeds' success? Obviously not the biggest club in England, not the most resources. Mm. They couldn't go out and pick out the most talented bunch of the crop from anywhere. Actually, they were the shopping cart for the big clubs, really. The big clubs would come looking to Leeds to Absolutely. pick off the talent and take them there. And I listened to a podcast recently with Tony Pulis, who had great success oh, yeah. with West Brom yeah, yeah. and Stoke City. And he would attribute a lot of their success to when they scouted a player, the biggest part, the first part of the scouting was the character of that player. Indeed. And, and how he would assimilate with that squad. And having a, a squad of these gentlemen, of yeah. people who are hardworking, hard determined, etc., was ahead of the talent and the talent came second. Yeah. How much do you attribute that to, to Leeds? I mean, you, you went through probably the golden generation of Leeds United yeah. where you, the team was probably at their most successful. Absolutely, because uh, I think at the time they won the old championship, yeah. uh, 92. I arrived in 94 when some of the big players, they, they won the championship where they've left, uh, including Eric Cantona. He yes. just left the club. And, uh, and, and, and to be honest, as you say, that yes, it was just a small club, you know, in a, in a small city, you know, but very passionate mm. about, about, about the club. You know, I mean, in the Yorkshire, Yorkshire, <laughs> Yorkshire yeah. pudding wasn't nice, but <laughs> Yorkshire was, was freezing and, and, yeah. and, 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 and cold. It was cold and dark. 
But and and you look at the players because at those those days it was long balls. It was like quick, quick uh, 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 pace. In I mean, ninety minutes, hundred hundred miles an hour game. You know what I mean? And to be honest, I wasn't really that 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 kind of player. That you know, and uh, <clears throat> and 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 I, I remember the the defenders were massive. Eh? Yes, they were big. We had David Weatherall. We had Carlton Palmer. I mean, they were like six foot two, six foot, <laughs> yeah. six foot three. It's, you know, uh, and and it's true to to that. I mean. Uh, we had teams like Wimbledon with Vinnie Jones. Yes. Do you know where... Uh, yeah, tough tackler Vinnie Jones <laughs> was. Tackler. If you want if, if to pause this podcast yeah. and get a real feeling for what Lucas is talking about, if you don't know what Vinnie Jones was like, go over to YouTube and watch a highlight <laughs> reel of Vinnie Jones' toughest tackles and you'll see what English football was like. Indeed. Back in back in Lucas's it, early days, oh, there yeah, yeah, yeah. it was it was a different kettle of fish altogether. No, it was. I, I mean, even the field. You know, you look at the stadiums now. You're like, oh, this is beautiful. We would go there. You know, I mean, it was wet. Mm. We barely see the grass. You know, uh, you go to other stadiums like uh, the Crystal Palace, Sellers Park. There was nothing. That's where uh, Wimbledon used to play. Right. And that's how, in their football, it wasn't really football. It, it was, was just, just a long ball. It was just a long ball. But of an every, elbow in the cheek. It was terrible. And it was, no, yeah. they were bad. Uh, Wimbledon, Everton, remember Duncan Ferguson? Yes. I mean, he's <laughs> one of the legendary top goal scorers of yeah. the club, was a manager recently of the club, was quite well, successful. He's a club legend. Yeah, you know what he did? He beat up a thief, you know, in his house, a robber. <laughs> that's, what, that's, that's Duncan Ferguson. That's but this is the kind of players we were facing mm. in those days, you know? Set pieces, you know, there's a, a good chance for them. That's how they play. Yeah. Long ball set pieces is a good chance to score in. But, but I had to adapt to, to, the, to that as well, the physical aspect of the game. Without losing your essence Without, of what made you a, a, a player that was attractive for them in the first place. Right? Indeed, yeah, in, in, indeed, and, and 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 to be honest, I didn't even have that kind of body, you yes, know, where yeah. to compete, you know, with the likes of, of 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 players like that, and and the attitude as well, you know, because it changes attitude, it changes character, and and uh, uh, I, I remember Howard Wilkinson he played. I played actually mostly in those kind of games. He never played me these nice good games where yeah. we play against Liverpool. You know what yeah. I mean? And and the worst thing is that uh, he would he would never play me, Phil, uh, most of the black players are the same. More more than three black players in the team. In the team, one or there would be only just two. Right. And if if I came on, Phil will come off. Right. You know, and and for me that's one thing that is really. Uh, made me think, you know, a lot about I mean, and, and, and about what kind of club, you know, the racism. Yes. And and you, and you look at the ten styles as well. I mean, it's predominantly white, and I'm thinking, Phil, are we hit the right place? You know. Yeah. And 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 for for us, that was the challenges. But once you get uh, 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 over that. You know, once you start playing now, you started to adapt. Because the training was hard, man. It was very, it was hard. You know, because I remember, I mean, we were at Kaiser Cheese, we were training from four till six, three times a week. There it's every day in the morning. I lived in the place, <laughs> me and Phil, we lived in the place next to the stadium, which was called Beast, and it was like, flat. it was like a hostel. We had an old woman who was looking after us, cooking for us, and hear a little bell. Yeah. You know, <laughs> because we were living in, it's like a loft right, right at the top. You know, you go inside the door, be these long stairs going up, so she was too old to, to, to come, come up the stairs. So, so she would just ring a bell, you know. <laughs> we lived with a guy called Robert Bowman, who is the youngsters. We lived together, so we used to travel to training. But, you know, and all those things, you... you you never, I've never, I'm not familiar with, and 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 I, and that helped me to to settle down a bit until Phil gets his own place. I get my own place, and then when I start playing, you know, it was uh, it was hard because I, I really, really never played my position at first. You know, yeah. you know, they put me in the, my first game was in the right wing. Yeah, 
You know, never had that pace to go and cross. No, I don't think any South African <laughs> football fans <laughs> pictures Lucas Redebe running down the right wing. Right? right. Yeah, number 27 with the jersey spelled the Redebe. <laughs> <laughs> so so it, it was quite hard because when you're sitting, you know, uh, on the... Uh, because you know when you're in the bench, when you're in the reserves, and uh, you always... You expected to stand up every 20 minutes to warm up, you know, in case. And then, and, then, and I warm up, and then the fans started singing, "Who are you? Who are?" You? No, <laughs> in your early days, as and you're warming I, up. Yeah, and and to be honest, at that time, I've been really even uh, uh, played in the first team. I've just in and out of the team mm. a lot, and and those are the things I had to I had to come over. Uh, you know, uh, I had to. You know, I didn't have to take that seriously or into heart and stuff like that. And actually, it made me stronger. Yeah, so you show it gave you that mental it, fortitude that then ended up in you becoming the captain of Leeds United. Oh, yeah. And I don't think there's a single person in the entire Yorkshire region that's going to be asking, who are you when <laughs> Lucas Redebe comes up? I showed them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> once I've you got that opportunity. Like, I'll I show you who I'll, I am. I'll show you, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, it's a great story. And, yeah. of course, as I alluded to, you later went on to become the wow. captain of Leeds. Yeah, and uh, you're a cult hero there in so many ways. I mean... There's a indie rock band yeah. oh, named Kaiser, Kaiser Chiefs because of you, <laughs> you know. Um, the rather be, uh, yeah. So it's it's, it's really an incredible thing that you achieved over there. Yeah. Lucas. And how much do you attribute that to that mental fortitude? Those early days. I mean, you struggled on a oh. difficult two day flight to get there. You struggled with injuries and the heartbreak that you must have felt when you're being scouted. And it's yeah. like, I can't even play for the scouts who see me. I want to go live my dream and, and play at the top level of football. Then the struggles with the manager early on, again, more injuries, the struggles yeah. with the style of play, the physicality. I mean, these early days sounded like a real, real struggle. No, it, was, it was a real struggle. You know, um, uh, for the fact that it was this great opportunity where... I felt like there were better players than me. You know, where that could have uh, gone, you know, and 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 make, and, 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 and impact, uh, make a huge impact there. M more talented mm. than, right. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, to be honest, when I looked at the team, um, I couldn't, I couldn't picture myself, you know, being a, a big part of that. Not the team, not, not the team, but the squad. Because mm. it was a huge squad at that time. And you look at them, yes, not much talent, but the discipline, you know, the professionalism in that team was absolutely amazing. So 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 I had to embark as well and and learn from most of those players and actually get myself to be a proper professional, you know, uh, in terms of respect, you know, in terms of n seeing the players that don't have the skill, but the attitude of those players is like 100%, you know, uh, mm. the discipline aspect of the game. Because nobody's looking up to you, to, uh, looking after you to say you're doing this wrong, you're doing that. You yourself have to be, you have to discipline yourself. You have, you have to take it, it has to start with you, not anybody else. Because you come from home, the, the food you eat, most important. You know, the weight. Because when I was there, I was 69 kilograms. 69 kilograms, when people were 85, yeah. I was so skinny. So they had to put me in a program where I can put on weight. And not actually put on weight, put in muscle. Muscle, yeah. You know, and, 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 and be strong. And it was very tough. You know, I, I know a lot of players now, they struggle with that. You know, and adapting to the level of fitness and, 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 and not just level of fitness, but consistently be fit enough to play week in, week out. Yeah, with the volume of games with, in the English league. Yeah, but but keeping the standard of the uh, the standard of the game right at the top, you know, every weekend where it asks from you, then you can come up with that, and that's how 
you know, I got into the team. You know, because it was it was tough discipline. It was hard training, and and to be honest, it was just I lived like a monk. Yeah, training just absolute discipline. Absolute. I had I had to be. I had to learn. I had to be disciplined, and not just I had at home, away wherever. You know, to be able to to get into the team and perform consistently, because there were players there that were. They were working hard, they're very disciplined, local yes. players that they can actually, uh, 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 they were there when, when I wasn't. So, we, I mean, here, this is this South African boy coming in, you know, into the team and uh, uh, take one of the position of the young instead of grooming one of their own yeah for that same position that can't go down well with the rest of the squad for it, example no i mean yeah. the fans as well the fans they're as well. looking to thinking is it good enough you better show you better you know what you i mean better show. so yeah. so in the, it wasn't just in the field of play outside the field of play it was they're looking to see how you behave yeah as well that was most important because what you behave it's going to determine who you are you know in the field of play so, so I had to get over that and 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 end that discipline and end the respect of the oh, my dressing room and the coaches and the fans first yeah. before I get into the field of play and show them, you know what I can what do. What you can do with because, the ball. Yeah, yeah, you you, you can you can't come there and be the same. Maybe one of the play one of the squad member. You, you want to be there. Yeah. And be in the team and make a, an impact. Yeah. As a foreigner. As a foreigner. Show them something that they've been seen. Yes. You have to you have to give <laughs> that extra something that, that they was don't expected. get locally. That's expect that's the minimum. Every weekend. Yeah. And you know, it's traveling, it's it takes a lot out of uh, an individual. You know, you travel, you're playing, you travel, come back. You have and, and the the worst part is that you're on your own. There's no family. There's no the support friend. isn't there. There's, the support system is not there. Yeah, you know, only from your teammates. You yeah, know, that are not familiar with you. They didn't look at you with. Yeah, I can't say. Eye, you know, I can't say that you had no support at all. Obviously, you alluded to it as that when you were welcome to the city without that support of your teammates and the club, you wouldn't have achieved what you achieved. Absolutely. But it's still extremely difficult without family support, the yeah. close relationships. Close support. relationships, yes. That's, that's something you lack. Yeah. Would you attribute this um, perhaps discipline and the volume of workload in training and things like that as the biggest differentiating factor when you went from the National Soccer League at the time oh, yeah. over to the English League, Absolutely. the Premier League? That would be the biggest differentiation. Obviously, a lot of talent, a lot of skill. Skill. I mean, uh, in the South African League, that Kaiser Chiefs side that you were in, <laughs> the, the skill from left to right and over across the entire pitch, the, the level of skill and flair and, and flair. quality in that Kaiser Chiefs side was absolute elite levels. Yeah. But like you said, two hours, three times a week mm-hmm. on the training ground and then a nice fun flair game on the weekend uh, for a Kaiser Chiefs side yeah. that was largely dominant. Exactly. That was the real wake-up call for you. Is That was the real differentiating factor, like I said, from the National Soccer League over to English Premier League, was that discipline, that work ethic, the physicality, all of those things was really what gave it that extra level. Absolutely. Uh, I, I think, uh, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, across uh, the, the, uh, our football uh, fraternity, especially in terms of the players, there were players who were better than me. They could have got that opportunity. They could have made great. I mean, look at the the, the great Dr. Kumande, oh. Skaratin Do you know? Yeah. You know, those were players that you, you think, you know what, they get those kind of opportunities. But, and, and, and I attribute a lot of that as well you know, in building character by how we grew up in South Africa. You know, the time of apartheid, you know. Yes. You suffered the, so much adversity already. Ad- adversity already, you know. It, it prepared me, you know, the family. I was born in a, with like the, the 10 siblings. I had 10 siblings. Yeah. 
you know, already it's a team, you know, there's already competition. Life started as Life a fight. <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> so now you have to go fight in England. In England, fight. you know yeah. what I mean? And and and, and to us, it, 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 it was amazing because, okay, me and Phil stayed together, uh, which it helped a lot, you know, because at some point we, we, we felt it, you know, we felt the loneliness, we felt, you know, where there, that uh, lack of support, but we supported one another. Even if we were not friends, yeah, back home, but <laughs> we had to forge that friendship. Yeah, you needed it. We needed it until uh, Phil left. Yeah. And it was a difficult time because, you know, the expectations in terms of uh, the work permit issues. You know, for me, yeah. that injury was a blessing in disguise. That's why when I said, you know, I was meant, I think for me, I was chosen, you know, to be, to be, to, to play football, not to earn money or, yes, obviously we need that. I mean, where I come from, you know, at home we lived in the four-roomed house, you know, where, I mean, a loads, of, loads of us in, the, yeah. in that house and struggled to sleep and uh, to get food. But for my parents, it wasn't a big thing. My parents wanted me to play food, to, to, be, to be a doctor. You know, in feminine, black families, yes. we know we... Uh, we pride ourselves with one of them being a doctor next. You know, those are kind of those careers, were the that, careers that, that are for, almost forced upon. You know what children I mean? Children in South Africa, yeah. Yeah. So, so, so now I'm in the land where I'm alone, and then I have to look after myself. I have to make a career out of what it wasn't expected from me, and and the career that I never really thought I will have. But you were made for it, Lucas. Oh. You know, and, and I, today, you know, it, it's amazing that I look back and I reflect and I'm thinking, you know, it was a blessing, you know, to, to, to be able to play football as a, as a, as a, as a career. career. And, and, and for me to go to Leeds and make it a job, that was something, I mean, how many players, how many people can have the opportunity like that? Yeah, and you know? it's, it's the dream of most young boys across the planet. Absolutely, but you have to work. Yeah, it takes a lot. But so the I, benefits, I don't think anyone can take that away from no, you, Lucas. But the you benefits, put in the work. Yeah, the benefits of all that. Unreal. The reward, unreal. The reward for the hard work. The reward for the hard work. Yeah, it's you know, the dream. It's, it's absolutely amazing. Mm. You know, you, you have to, because you don't see that when you start. You, you're in pain, you're struggling, you like, you know, but you don't see. Uh, the, the end uh, goal of it throughout your career. Throughout you say you the only career. really saw it when reflecting after your professional playing career ended. Yes, yeah. because I mean the the amount of fitness I was in the the, the fitness level was unbelievable. I, I could play three games in a day, <laughs> you know, and that's some of the benefits of the club looked after. You know, the family member, what I've learned and what I became, it molded me. You know, to be. Not just a footballer, but a professional footballer who had made an impact. And as I said to you, I said, you just don't want to be one of the players. Mm. You want to make an impact. You know, the position, you have to own it. They have to look at you and respect you. You know, and, and what that, that's what I got. I got an opportunity to leave the club. Yes. And I said, no chance. In the early 2000s, correct? In the early 2000s. Yeah. Man, Man United came. came. I said, no. Roma came. I said, no. You know, AC Milan came. I said, no. Yeah. When every bo- when, when, when one, one, any player could have just jumped. Yeah, let's go to Manchester United. So Alex Manchester. Ferguson, we winning titles. The, the paycheck's going to be nice and big. Top of the league. Top of the league. But, you know? But you had a devotion to Leeds that couldn't be shaken. I'm telling you, you know, I could see the club growing. And I could see myself being part of that growth within the club. This, you know, uh, George Graham came after the Howard Wilkinson. Yeah. He gave me the opportunity. Yeah. The academy came. You know, you see these youngsters coming up. That's just this, the, the structure of the professional football club. And then you formed a partnership and with Jonathan Woodgate at that formed, stage. And, and you guys were a, formidable. And he was a young guy. He, he came, I, I played with, with David Weatherall at the back, Carlton Palmer. They left. 
the guys, the young boys coming up, Woodgate, young Woodgate came. Oh my God. Yeah, the two of you were solid. unplayable on the <laughs> oh, day. Yeah, we right? were solid. Yeah. Not only in the field, eh? training. <laughs> <laughs> you know where everybody don't see that? Yeah. We were like tough. We put a lot of players in the in the treatment area. <laughs> they were complaining at the club. They the, were complaining. That your own attacking players, of course. That when you're playing defense versus attack yeah. in the training games. Yeah, that's the attitude. Mm. You know? That's the same. That's what it requires to keep the high level that you performed at that week in, week out. You do what you do in the field. You do it in training. And in order to do it properly, you have to even even get even harder in training. You know, work. Twice harder than when it because when you're in the field of play, it's, it's quite easy. I mean, week in, week out, you come across different strikers, proper quality. I am mean, Mark Viduka, Robbie Viduk, Keane. Oh, la, 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 la. Robbie Keane and Alan Smith. Alan Smith. Uh, you know how Alan Smith was at training? He must have been a monster. He I mean, was a monster. He didn't care who he tackled in a football game. I'm and he's sure a in training it was he the was same. A, he, was, he was a striker. I don't think I recall a striker ever getting as many red cards as Alan Smith in English football. Yeah. And his, his aggressiveness, aggressiveness, you know what I mean? He was so aggressive. Determined. Like as a, a youngster. Ball. He yeah. was only about yeah, before, 17, I mean, 18. He was fairly young when he moved on to Manchester United. So. Yes. You know, but uh, Lucas, before we move on yeah. from Leeds, uh, you alluded to the time when Phil left the club. You were injured at that time. Yeah. Um, and you guys were struggling. Uh, you were still underneath uh, Howard Wilkinson at the time. Yes. And it was, you You alluded to the idea of your injury being a blessing in disguise at sure. the time because you lost the opportunity to move from Leeds then. Yeah. And your options wouldn't have been Manchester United at that stage. No. But, but you know, the, the, uh, the other uh, problem was that, that in, why I was saying it's a blessing in disguise because... You had to play a certain amount of games to retain your work permit. And the games were in the first team. So that's why Phil left, because he didn't play enough, enough first game, team games. first team games to retain their work permit. So for me, the, uh, the excuse was the injury. Right, so they say. To say, you know what? Lucas should retain his work permit. He didn't have the opportunity the to play those games because of injury. Of the injury. But you know, obviously, under Howard Wilkinson at that time, yeah. it's unlikely you would have got those games no. whether you were injured or not. Exactly. Yeah, so it was really a blessing in disguise because your time in England would have come to an end in uh, the same way that Phil's In the same way, yeah. yeah. And uh, you, I, I never knew because I never played. I didn't know I would have come back. Phil who played, scored a lot of goals, and, he, and surely he was in the shopping, in the, in the in market himself. Yeah. Uh, that's why he went from there to Italy. I would yeah. have come straight back home. Yeah. You know, I would have come straight back home and hopefully back to Kaiser Chiefs again. And uh, things, uh, life wouldn't be the same. Wouldn't have been too bad being a Kaiser <laughs> Chiefs player. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it wouldn't have been the same. Yeah. And uh, definitely you you had a wonderful career with Leeds, Lucas. Yeah, and uh, uh, it came to an end having played with players like Harry Kuehl. Mm. who was an unbelievable talent. And another uh, compliment to the Leeds scouting network who exactly. were shopping in countries that most English sides wouldn't have shopped in before, Australia, yeah. South Africa. Um, you understand getting players from France, from Italy, Belgium. from Spain, Belgium. Yeah. That was fairly common, but you had uh, players like Harry Kuhl and Mark Viduka who formed a partnership at that club you know that I mean? was unbelievable. Yeah. Robbie Keane came on loan, on loan at the time yeah. from Inter Milan yeah. and we know where his career went at Tottenham exactly. Hotspur, what a player he exactly. was. Um, and <laughs> I've got a few of my picks that I think are some of the best players that you played with. Yeah. I mean, for, but imagine Jimmy Floyd Hasselbeck. Who knew Jimmy Floyd Hasselbeck? Hasselbeck. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> before his Chelsea days. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I mean, Jimmy Floyd Hasselbeck, what a goal scorer. What a goal unbelievable. scorer. He, he was so unbelievable. you played with some really top players. Yeah. I have a few of my favorites that you've played with. Who do you feel are some of the top players you played with? I mean, you can give it to me. Played in, with, yeah. You played with. I mean, you can give it to me and say, this was the top professional. Yeah. He was great oh. with this. This was the most skilled player. Who who would you pick out? Indeed, indeed. I, I think, you know, Leeds itself, you have to be special to be a Yorkshire, to be in that team. And I think Leeds was a very special team, to be honest, with a lot of, with great history, you know? And whoever came to Leeds, he became part 
of the club. Not, you know, kissing the badge, just no. But you become part and parcel of the city. I think people itself. don't realize so, the level of commitment to that oh. club the community has. It's a bit, uh, I, it's, I compare it to Newcastle United, where they live, live the football. The yeah. football, I mean, Season tickets are on the dinner oh, table before ten. food. <laughs> you know? Hey, before food. Before food. Religion, I don't say, I don't, I've never heard anybody talk about going to church. Yeah, it leads. It leads was always the... going to football. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, yeah. and I'm telling you, it was amazing the relationship between the players and the fans was, was, was great. You know, and, and that's, the kind of players came to the club. You know, who had that, you know, that kind of heart. I mean, we had uh, Nigel Martin. What a gentleman. Oh, my God. You know, I played, you know, they were, as I said earlier, so I said, you know, there's this perception about the football player, professional footballers, it's about the money and, mm. you know what I mean? But I'm telling you, Nigel Martin was one of the gentle Man of the game, family man, you know, when soft spoken, gentle, but as a goalkeeper, reliable. Yeah. Reliable is someone that you can look at back and say, you know what, even if they go past me, I know Nigel is there. He's got that. <laughs> He's got it, you know? He, we, we clicked it like that. I mean, you move straight into the midfield with David Batty. Danny Mills. With, with Danny Mills on the right, which, I, I mean, Danny Mills is one of the players that was hated most. <laughs> <laughs> Amongst Skinner, the players? Amongst, amongst the our teammates? own players, our teammates, <laughs> and even the opposition. <laughs> even the opposition. It was absolutely amazing. He was a hard like, man. He was, a, he was hard. <laughs> he was the nasty. But even his attitude towards us, you know, he was like, he was, he had this sense of, he never had a great sense of humor mm. that most of the players had. You know, it was always like kicking and nibbling and, you know, and, you know, picking and stuff. And no, nobody liked him. You know, if you would have said, if, if in the Premier League, and everybody says, who's the most liked player in the Premier League? He's one of them. <laughs> <laughs> He's one of them. Even, even from our team, as a teammate, it's like, Hey, Danny, I'm glad he's on our side. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, you don't want to you be on You need someone end. like that. Yeah. You know who? Which was, but <laughs> what a hard worker. Yeah. Up and down. The attitude was, 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 was great in the field. And I mean, we had uh, Gary Kelly. Oh, man. The Irish boy, eh? Irish. Funny. Very funny. Dressing room was like, I think when that he was comes my in. my next question. <laughs> <laughs> in, in the dressing room, it was amazing. The comedian you know, well, of the dressing room. Yeah, we had him. We had the Jason Wilcox. We had Michael Dubry. Those guys were were hilarious. Uh, one of the days they came in early. I was captain of the club. They came in early. And I was I'm th when I arrived at the club, I had my spot. You know, there's my captain spot. There, yes. the parking. They say it's captain. I park there all the time. And I and I always I'm always first. Come in first and park. Now I see. Gary Kelly's car, Danny Mill, uh, 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 Michael Dubry, and Jason Wilcox. I'm thinking, what are they doing so early? So I went in, the cameras, had, they, they closed, they, they, sh they shut off the cameras, and I'm thinking, okay. So I went into the dressing room, there's rabbits running into the dressing room. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell? Went to the, it was, we had a pool, indoor pool. In the pool, there's ducks in the pool. <laughs> the manager, David Little came. He was he was mad. <laughs> Thinking, <laughs> what the hell is going on? So it was a prank. The boys it was let a prank. loose I'm, rabbits and ducks all of them made it into a little farm. No, that's that's what that's that team. That's mm. that what made that special team. You that's know? where you found your family in Leeds. That's where I found my belonging mm. at the club. And and that you know that. And I've never seen that before. I've never. And I mean, they were hilarious. And Ke Gary Kelly is very special. Who would you say is the most skillful player you ever played with? 
the most skillful was Mark Viduka. Mark Viduka. You know how big you know he Harry was Kuehl, over Dr. Kamala. Mark Viduka is a big guy. He's a big guy. He had very tidy feet for a tall, big for fella. A, I'm telling you. And not only tall, physical. Yeah, he was lazy. hard to deal with. And lazy. Was he lazy? <laughs> It's a bit like a Dimitar Bubatov. Maybe younger fans will remember yeah. Dimitar Bubatov. Like very mercurial. You won't see him running about. No. But gets his goals Get just because his understanding of positioning. Positioning. He's um, the – he wouldn't run long distances, but no. when he turns on that little turn of turn. pace, he creates the space for himself. And, Absolutely. And great goal scorer, Mark Viduka. Yeah. And his attitude was like, no, man. I, I'll go home and stay back home, you know. He was last – we'll, we'll be in training – uh, uh, and then, and then, because the training, as you drive through, you see the training pitch there. And then he'll be, we'll be in training, uh, uh, ready for a warm up. He'll be just driving in. Yeah. So and he's like, one of those that the talent carried him. The talent his, carried him, definitely. You didn't have that chance, Lucas. You had to do the hard work. I had to work hard. <laughs> I had to, <laughs> I had to end all that. You know what I mean? So Mark Viduka, really top of the list, the head of Dr. Kamalo, Dr. Uh, head of Harry Kuehl. I think I, I'm looking at the overall. I'm looking at the the whole, okay, uh, holistic mm -hmm. football player. Mm. You know, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the the late shoes was unbelievable. Oh my, the late shoes. Dribbling skill and knowledge of the game, or reading and funny. Of the game. Oh, was he a funny guy? He as was well? very funny. You know. We come from, and, and me and she was, we come from the same area in Deep Proof. So, we, so when he dribbles someone, he just laughs and says, I keep out here. <laughs> so we laugh yeah. while we play, you know? I mean, Doctor was special. Special player. Very special. You know, I mean, actually now recently I've been watching on, on that uh, on TikTok and there were some clips of him. <sighs> Unreal. Unreal. Yeah. Unreal, you know? Unbelievable, you know, uh, a, a skill, you know, uh, and and a very gi uh, gifted with the ladies <laughs> <laughs> more than anyone else. But 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 what a great player! What a very good uh, a good player. I mean, uh, and I look at uh, players like uh, 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 Jimmy Floyd, um, Harry Kewell, mm. um uh, Oliver Daco, Olivier Daco in, in that midfield. Very awkward. Very awkward player, but very skillful. You know, when, and the vision he had was unbelievable. Unbelievable. That midfield, him and David Batty, nobody will do anything. No, no. And then I'm going to look at up front. Yeah, Jimmy was fine. Jimmy was good. He had a very um, uh, 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 Good shot. He was with right that right leg was very yeah. hard. Even the passing, when he passes you, he just you got to be prepared. No hospital passes. <laughs> there. Oh yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. But it, it was great in a way. I, you know, the thing is that I played with different kind of players, yeah. different characters, and and all made sense. Right to the team. Right. We had. They all brought something S unique. Something some, some unique. Some ability that. Yeah, you never be a good. Possibly some of them never played as many games as we can, but in the dressing room, <laughs> were absolutely <laughs> funny. Tony Eboa. Some great, some, some, really some. great list of players that you played with. And against, Lucas? Hey? Who, oh, did you, against. who did you face up against that you really thought, well, this is, this nah, is tough? This is hard work. I mean, you were, there's not many interviews you do with centre-backs in the no. played Premier League football. So this is the, really the one where you can, I'm sure you can remember a game where you were like, this guy, oh, this yeah. guy's unbelievable. No, um, I mean, it's the national team. Uh, you did the play the final of the national team. Uh, it made slim money. It was unbelievable. I, was, I ran the whole match I'm, like I've never ran before. It was hard. The 96 final? The 96 final. You know, I had to bring everything to the game. Caesar's kick where I was thinking I couldn't even do it. You know, where I thought I would just kick his head. You know, he, he stretched my game, you know, to the limit. And, and uh, I mean, Thierry Henry was, yeah. you know, when he, when he just comes into the pitch or, or you see his name and your heart just skips a, <laughs> a few beats <laughs> and you're thinking, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, I, indeed. You see, we'll be sitting like this. You say, "Oh my God!" In the dressing room, 
I mean, you faced the great Arsenal side then with Dennis Bergkamp Dennis and Bergkamp. Thierry Henry and Robert Pires Robert a little Pires. bit behind them. It was a great Vieira. Arsenal side. Vieira. Patrick Vieira. Oh, oh, what a player. Oh, my God. And he, that was, it was amazing. I mean, uh, I mean, we look at uh, Alan Shearer. Oh, Alan Shearer. At Newcastle. Yeah. I mean, Blackburn, oh Blackburn before that, yeah. Blackburn but, before. But, I mean, really in your heyday was the Newcastle days. Indeed. When you came up against Alan Shearer. Yeah. And then and then the next thing you look in, and there's Les Ferdinand, there's, there's Michael Owen. You're thinking, yeah. what am I... What am I going to do? <laughs> what am I going to do? So, so for me, I had to be at the top of my game every, every week. weekend. But the thing is that not just being top of the game, I had, they made me look better. Because I had, every time I'm thinking, who am I, look, who am I facing today? Shit. How do you prepare I'm, for that, Lucas? No, nah, I play my game in the dressing room. I play my game in the mind. You know, and I play the perfect game. Tackles, headers, and then once I go into the into the field, I'm prepared. Unbelievable! It was that's amazing. A great answer. Yeah, and I think Lucas, that's really what puts you ahead of many other players. You are part of. I mean, we just spoke about the great Bafana side of oh, yeah. 1996. That was a great team. Fantastic. And how do you compare that side? I mean, it's so difficult to compare that to team compare. to any generation no, of no, no, Bafana, yeah. let alone today, today yeah, where indeed, we have some struggles. Indeed. We have some real talented players yeah, today. It's unfair to be what, honest to compare. It's unfair to compare that. Yeah, no. um, what's missing? Because, um, I mean, there's a lot of talent in the side today. But what's really missing? I think the passion of the game, you know, uh, to be honest. Uh, the fact that... <clears throat> uh, the players know why they're playing football, why they're in the field. And appreciate being there. And appreciate being there. Because for me, it was not about the money. It was not about the fame. You know, it was about the talent. How far I can take my talent and how far I can improve and be a better player. And be, because that builds you. It builds you. And, and, and unconsciously, you know where uh, it builds. It builds you uh, after football. That that's what prepares you for life after football. But the player now, you, they think about today. Yeah, I mean they look at hundred and twenty thousand rand a week a month. It's a lot of money. It's good money. It's good money. Yeah, but you know what? Money is money. Yeah. You've got, you've got bills to pay. You've got you've all the responsibilities. You've got kids. During that time of the game, you, the responsibility builds up. You're in the limelight. Everything is going great. Once it stops, you need to be prepared for that. You need to be prepared for that. Mm. But, again, it's what you did. That prepares you. That prepares you. Yeah. For... for, for uh, uh, your life after football. And that discipline really, it just keeps coming back to that because the discipline prepared you for your life after football. Just the discipline of taking the game so seriously, understanding what you need to do to be the best, to be the icon that you are today, let's be honest. To find yourself. You need to find yourself in life. The Lucas Redebe at home. You are. The Lucas Redebe at, in this interview, the Lucas Redebe today. Today isn't Lucas Redebe yeah. that we all talk about. Indeed. And, but you had, to, you had to do all of that to become that Lucas. Indeed. You know, you had to go where you've never gone before as an individual. You had to, you have to face uh, adversity like you've never uh, faced before, things that you've never seen, that all prepares you. You know, the fans were looking out. You know, everybody kept saying, hey, you guys are brilliant. You travel to this place. You see this. It's great football. You get money. It's not about that. I lost my wife playing football. Football meant nothing to me. Everything was just, it, it was, they mean nothing. Life stopped, you know? 
and then people realize that you know I'm a human, I'm human as well. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a human being. Things that affect you affect me even worse. You know. So so those are some of the things that build you. And 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 made makes you. You know what to be who I am today. You know the understanding of of life through football. How many youngsters want to, you ask what, every youngster today, what do you want to be like football? I want to be, or, or who do you support? They're like, Barcelona, ah, Real Madrid, Chelsea, why? Why not, why not uh, uh, Golden Arrows? Because you start somewhere in life. You know, you start there to appreciate where you end. So, so, for me, it's not it's it's beyond football, you know. But football plays a massive role. I mean, look at Madiba, look at what football did for the country. Yeah, absolutely amazing. Sport That's, can change can change the entire mind state of a nation. Of a nation, it changes an individual. It changes you to be the better you to be better you. Yeah, sports are so important, Lucas. Absolutely. We can't amazing. lose this for young people. Young people need to participate in some sort of competitive sports. I, you know, I, I, I look at them, and, okay, yes, you know, the, li the life of a footballer, you know, living in a big house, living in a, yeah. driving a Porsche. That's driving. not what it's about. No, it's beyond that. I mean, the players deserve that, the ones who earn it, of course. You because deserve those rewards, and, and, it's, and luxury isn't something, but in order to appreciate that to luxury, we can't be talking about too many Mark Vadukas like <laughs> no, we did. We Do you know what I'm saying? Indeed. We need to be and talking it, more about Lucas Rodriguez, who worked hard, hard. who took the, the, the discipline, the hard work, the adversity, took it all in your stride and became an icon and, of Leeds United. And, and, and literally these young boys, I mean, I was, the other day I was laughing. Because if, uh, I was with some of, of my guys who we went in, we were in Africa. Uh, you know, when we come together, we come together now and then to play this Legends game. And uh, uh, Patrick Mboma said to me, yes, yes, man, you had all these kids named after you. I said, yeah, yeah, but they're not mine. <laughs> 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 they have my name, but yeah, they're, not, they're not my kids. It was funny. But uh, the thing is that what that's what uh, impact you make in the game. You don't realize that. While you, you're playing because you're suffering, you know, you're having, mm -hmm. it's hard. You know, life of football is tough. You know, people will look at you traveling and stuff. You travel, you play games, you come back, you have to go for the national call-up. You know, your family suffers. Because you live, you have your life at home, you have your children at home. All of a sudden, your kids are just big. Where is the time gone? You know, it's, I mean, I've never thought I would spend that much time at Leeds. Look at where I've started mm. and how I started the club. Nah. I'll never say that, you know, we spent 12 years at the club. 12, 12 years. years. Yeah. You had like, let's be honest, 10 really great years with the club. Great. Great years. You know, I struggle today with injuries, but for me, it was well earned. Mm. I look at myself, I don't complain. And I, I look at those scars and then I was like, you know, I'm proud that I got this Battle doing scars. what I did yeah. best in my, this is for me to say to my kids, you see, they were out, this That's what was it worth it. This is what it takes to be, you, you struggle, but you know what? It's the name of the game. Lucas, I, uh, <laughs> I'll be a miss to miss out on some of the questions that I've got here because I could sit and talk to you all day. It's so conversational. <laughs> but I think there's two things that I really yeah. want to uh, tackle here, maybe three. Mm. One, um, obviously, there's a lot of administrative reasons as to why West Africans play for European clubs True. ahead of South African clubs. Sure. But it's not just administrative, is it? There's something that, especially the Premier League, yeah. the physicality oh, of yeah. the league, uh, calls to our West African counterparts, counterparts yeah. uh, versus South Africans. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, for you, I don't think there's anyone better to ask this question. 
what is it? What do we need in South Africa to like sort of break that and allow more South Africans like you and Stephen Pienaar, Sean Bartlett, you know, like really go and make your mark on the Premier League? Yeah, you know, um, it's sad to see. You know, we only got, uh, I think, one at Burnley, uh, Lyle Foster. Lyle Foster, yeah. Who as well, I'm sorry to say, but struggling as well as an individual. Yeah, mentally. You know, we, that's, uh, there's no secret health. to, to no, his mental struggles there. No, no, there's no secret. But um, for me, <clears throat> it takes a lot. You know, uh, especially from where you come from. <clears throat> you know, I think the structures of the game, especially you, for me, it's difficult as well to compare. I don't, I don't like comparing because... It's different generation, different breed. <laughs> different breed of players. And it, and it would be unfair to compare, you know, the genera different generations, you know, and the way. I mean, football evolved, you know, and mm. there's a lot of money. It's big business. But I think the most important thing is the structures of the organizations of our football uh, uh, in the country that can open opportunities for these young stars. You know, it's not about the talent. The talent's you know, there. The talent is there. But it's, it's, it's preparation away from football that can, make, can get these boys to go and play overseas. Let's talk about the administrative side of things. Obviously, oh, yeah, there's yeah. no sort of secrets as to the connections of your, <laughs> your, your hat in the ring, as mm -hmm. to say, for the SAFA presidency. Yeah. Uh, SAFA coming out with an announcement after that. Uh, I'll read their four points <laughs> that they selected that they publicly announced, which we all found a bit strange that they had to come public with public, this. Public, yeah. um, So they said it must be noted that the SAFA election was held in 2022 for a period of four years, making the next election due in 2026. 26. Um, it needs to be noted that unlike US elections, okay, SAFA elections <laughs> do not have a vote for president only. The election for president, oh. national and provincial members and all NEC positions mm -hmm. Uh, all voters are the 52 regions and any person who hopes to be a president must be nominated by any of the constituent, uh, constituent groups and must pass the integrity test. Uh, we are not just voting <laughs> for the president. That is laughable. <laughs> you're, you're welcome to laugh, Lucas, because that is a laughable <laughs> response because there was no need to come out publicly with whatever media news no. your, your presidency was uh, attracting. Uh, your, your, your Why did you have to have a, a public announcement? A public announcement of the rules. Oh, yeah, but for what it takes to why? Why did you have to explain? There was no need. There is no. But 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 that shows what goes on. Politics in 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 that in that organization, but not not just politics, but who runs? Mm. Because. It's, it's, it's leadership that uh, it's in charge, that, that brings the integrity of the organization. You know, if you don't have that, things like this will happen. Well, Lucas, I don't see <laughs> any human being associated to the game in this country with more integrity than you, in my opinion. Uh, and I wouldn't want, if, if the opportunity were to present itself to you, would you take it? You know, I've, I've always said that I'm grateful to what uh, football has done for me. There's kids who looked and say, I want to be professional football. There's current players who want to be, have to live in a structures where they, f they have to feel valued and, and, and uh, want to to have that kind of opportunities to play football at the highest level. You know, and, and to be honest, when I finished, I said, I look back and I'm thinking, well, how did I get here? I had to be, I had to play for the national team and represent my country to be able to achieve a work permit. To achieve a work permit and you have to be that quality of a player. And thanks to who? to suffer.
So they gave me the opportunity to do that. Without Safa, you wouldn't have been able to play for Leeds. Without Safa, without Danny, without, without Dennis Mambul, without Mulevi Oliphant and them, I wouldn't have a chance. So, so for me, I would like, I said, I wa once I retire, I want to give back. They le the legacy, it's more important than anything else. And, and, and for me, it's not about the position. It's not about the position. For me, it's about succeeding in football and bringing and, and, and bring football to what it was when it brought the country together. You know, when, we, when you look at uh, uh, the credibility, the respect of what football has brought to this country, and, 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 who, and, and, and the individuals that have really played a role in what football is today, that needs to continue. And how would it continue? By bringing new ideas, bringing new people into the structures of football. People who have been there before. Yeah, to not only continue, but to thrive and grow. And, and grow into those positions. It, for me, it's for them to, to live a legacy. Well, Lucas, I, I couldn't say any more so than us and the team here at Onside. Yeah really wish you all the best and the opportunity for you to give back to yeah. the sport that gave you so much. And you gave us, us all <laughs> so much, to be honest, Lucas. I don't know if people really tell you this in the streets every day, but yeah. you really gave us a lot. Yeah. I think in 1996, the country was given a lot of hope and, oh, well, yes. and it's, it's you and a set of players that, that made us really believe. And especially football fans, we loved watching you over those years. Um, and we just... It, it, it's a really big moment to be sitting here and speaking to you. I'll be mm. completely honest, Lucas. Uh, really big fan. Yeah. And thank you so much. Um, I, <laughs> again, like I said earlier, I could sit and talk to you all day. Yeah, I've got yeah. a, like a list of more questions here <laughs> to speak about. But I think uh, it's a perfect ending yeah. for our conversation is that if we can get the administrative side right to achieve the best opportunities for those that are in the system. Leave out create, the politics. Leave, leave out, the, out politics. the politics. Just administrate. Let's do the best administrative work that we can to have the system in the best possible state Yes. and let the players, the coaches, and the people and in football to do the rest. Succeed. Lucas Rodebe, thank you so much. Ballers, thank, thank you, you so much for joining us, <laughs> me and Lucas Rodebe, on this very special interview of Onside ZA, powered by Betway, where you get way more. If you join as a new member on the Betway app, use the affiliate code Onside ZA and you can get way more. For me, for now, remember, stay onside with us and Betway. Don't be offside, be onside. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks, Lucas. A pleasure.
No, I play my game in the dressing room. I play my game in the mind. You know, and I play the perfect game. Tackles, headers, and then once I go into the, into the field, I'm prepared. Unbelievable.
Phil Sitsedi, uh, Joe, Mr. Jones. So what they did, they had to split the fares for them to come over. <laughs> so we took a flight to all these places until we get to Leeds. So that we everybody can travel. Play, yeah. Play against Liverpool. You know what yeah. I mean? And and the worst thing is that uh, he will he will never play me, Phil, uh most of the black players are the same. More more than three black players in the team in the team. One or there will be only just two to adapt. Because the training was hard, man. It was very it was hard. You know, because I remember, I mean, we were at Kaiser Chiefs, we were training from four till six, three times a week. There, it's every day in the morning, at least 100%, you know, uh, mm. the discipline aspect of the game. Because nobody's looking up to you, to, uh, looking after you to say you're doing this wrong, you're doing that. You yourself have to be, you have to discipline yourself. You have, you have to take it, it has to start with you, not anybody else. Because there were players who were better than me. They could have got that opportunity. They could have made great. I mean, look at the the, the great Dr. Kumar. Oh. It's got a team to us. Do you know? Yeah. You know? That week in, week out. You do what you do in the field. You do it in training. And in order to do it properly, you have to even even get even harder. I don't say I don't I've never heard anybody talk about going to church. Yeah, it leads. It leads was always it. Going to football, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what I mean. We come from, and, and me and shoes come from the same area in Deep Proof. So, we, so when he dribbles someone, he just laughs and says, "Kimbi, I keep party." So we laugh yeah. while we play, you know.